Right, hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome to today's video. And as promised, today we're going to have a look at a few more little bits and pieces with regards to the Xbox One. And today we're going to have a look at a console which is displaying symptoms of the black screen of death. Now, anybody who's not familiar with the black screen of death, uh, it is basically a similar sort of thing to the PS4 blue light of death in as much as you get the little power light uh, on the front of the machine but you don't actually get anything on the display. Now, unlike the PS4, of course, where we know the blue light of death relates to issues with the APU, the black light of death is something completely different. And the black light of death on an Xbox One is more often than not caused by an issue with the onboard flash. Now, rather like the PS4, uh, the Xbox One has most of its software based on the hard disk drive. Uh, and to that effect, of course, that it has a very small amount of that in flash. Now, this particular machine uh, does actually start up, albeit very, very slowly. It takes it quite a while to actually get up to the point where, where it will actually boot into an OS. Now, I haven't actually seen it boot at all. Um, what I have seen it do is it goes to the green screen, so we get a green screen. Uh, there is also a green screen of death, which again is usually down to a bad hard disk drive or corruption of the software or partitions on that hard disk drive. So today we are going to see if we can recover this machine. Now sometimes it will boot, and other times it sorry sometimes it will boot to the green screen, but other times it won't boot at all and just sits at a black screen. So it's potentially a bad hard drive, but we're going to see if we can recover the software. Now then, so from a black light of death, of course, that is <clears throat> really rather easy. And what we need is, we need our Xbox One, of course, and this was plugged in, and we've got it hooked up to our test monitor, of course. We need a USB stick. There we go. So you need one that's probably at least four gigs in size. It used to be two, uh, but the latest recovery uh, images from Microsoft are actually around the four gig mark. So this is an eight gig stick. So this has got plenty of space. Uh, something to test it with. So, you know, a game that you've got kicking around. Uh, a controller as well, obviously, if you've got it. So this particular machine was sent to me. Um, apparently, it uh, it does power on, uh, but it can't factory reset it. And what else does it say there? Reads a game disc, no. Disc read DVD, no. So apparently it doesn't read disc. Does Wi-Fi connect, no. But that's probably because it can't get it to wireless. Does controller connect, no. Uh, okay, so it does not boot up is written on the bottom there by whoever checked this out. Uh, I checked it out, and of course, as I say, sometimes it will boot to a green screen, other times it just sits at a black. Uh, and of course, because it says that it doesn't read game, I presume that's because they can't actually get it into the OS to check. But either way, I've just knocked it down to make sure that it does read a game. So we've potentially got a disk drive issue. Although, like I say, I think it's all probably down to the fact that they can't get this into the OS to even test it. So, we're going to see if we can actually uh, rekindle some life into this Xbox One. And what we're going to do is, first of all, we are going to prepare our USB stick for formatting. So, we're just going to head over to the PC. And I'll get rid of that for you. So, we're going to open a web browser. And what you want is Xbox One Recovery. Type that into Google. And you will get this little link here at the top for Xbox One Offline System Update Diagnostic Tool. Or OSUD, as um, Microsoft seems to like to refer to it. And essentially what you've got is, now then, unlike on the PlayStation where you've just got one main image of the very latest firmware, in true Microsoft fashion, if anybody's dealt with the OS system patching as part of their job role will know that they're in sadly not the one size fits all solution for Microsoft products and seeing as the Xbox One is essentially um, a Windows 8 PC in a nice shiny box uh, the same can be said for the Xbox One so depending on your console OS version as you can see on the screen there it depends on which version of this you need now if you're lucky enough to know exactly what version of the OS you've got or if your console will boot, but it's not quite right, so you just want to flatten it back to factory defaults, then, of course, you will have some idea and be able to go into the system settings and the system information and get the build string from there, and then compare that to the relevant list here and download the, 
the version of the OSINT tool that you are going to need. Now, unfortunately, in this instance where we can't get it to boot, and the best we get is a green screen and nothing else, the best we can do is to actually start from the top and work our way down. <laughs> so, what we're going to do is we're going to start at the top there, OSINT 1, and basically what that will do is you click the download link, And you basically get a zip file. Now, essentially, all you need to do is you need to download the zip file to your local hard disk and unzip the contents of that zip file to the root of your USB stick. So that's what we're going to do here. Now, I do have these things already downloaded, so I'm just going to install the USB stick to our PC there. Now, as you can see, this has been used to actually recover a PS4 recently, so I'm just going to format this. Now, for anybody who's done this with a PS4, we'll know that the partition needs to be FAT32, but on an Xbox One, it needs to be NTFS. Default allocation size, or 4096 uh, bytes is the allocation unit size, whichever you like. Uh, I always click quick format, you don't need to do anything fancy with it. Just give it a volume label of Xbox One, so you, at a glance you can see what software is installed on here. Just going to say OK to the format. And that is going to go away. Job, and there we go. So that's now formatted with NTFS, which is good. If we go back and we have a really quick look at our E drive, no, our G drive, even, you'll be able to see now that, of course, we have our USB stick and it's completely empty. So, as I was saying earlier, what we have done, or what I've done, is I already have this software. In here, so I've actually got all three of the uh, the OSINT tools and the factory reset tool just for uh, shits and giggles. So we're going to start at number one, and we're going to work our way forward. So essentially, when you extract that zip file after you've downloaded it, what you're going to end up with is this little folder here, this dollar system update. So from the zip file, you're going to want to extract it to the root of your USB stick. That basically means open your USB stick in Explorer and stick it straight in there. So what you're going to end up with is that dollar system update folder on the root of your USB stick. So this is going to take a little while to uh, to actually do. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back in a sec once that's finished copying. And then we're going to jump back to the Xbox and we're going to see if we can get that to boot. Right, okay then ladies and gentlemen, so we've gone away now and we've managed to get the OSUD tool version number one, copy to our USB stick, and I now have that here in my hand. So, of course, as we said, the contents of that zip file just need to be extracted to the root of your SD card, sorry, your uh, USB stick. So, essentially, on here you will have that little dollar system update folder, and then... What we need to do is we need to try and boot this into the OS. Now that's quite easy. And what we'll do is we plug the USB stick into the side USB 3 port on the Xbox One. So like that there. Okay, so that's that done. Our USB stick's inserted. Uh, if the console is powered up, then power it down. Unplug the power lead for 30 seconds and plug it back in at the rear. So we're completely off. And then what we need to do is we need to press and hold the side sync button, the eject button, and then we need to tap power. Uh, once the white light is on the front, we release the power button. We keep the sync and eject buttons held until we hear the power up tone. And what we should find is within 10 seconds, we should hear a further power up tone if the boot has been successful. If the boot fails, we'll hear a power down tone or we won't hear anything else within that 10 second period. If we hear the power down tone or we don't hear any secondary tone, then of course the boot has failed. If we get two power up tones, then we leave it. We let the machine do what it needs to do. Eventually, we should see it boot into a software update screen, and we should be able to go from there. So that's what we're going to do now. So as before, we are going to we're going to press the sync button on the side of the machine. Doesn't feel too good on this machine, actually. It feels a little bit spongy. 
but what can you do? Uh, we're going to hold the eject, and we're going to press power. So we get one power up tone. Keeping them held, remember. Just trying to pick up the secondary tone if we can get one. And we've not actually got anything there at all, so I'm just going to remove the power. I'm just going to plug it back in, and then we're just going to give that another try. Just to give it the benefit of the doubt. I'm not too sure that the sync button on this thing is actually working particularly well. It doesn't feel to press properly, so we might have to have a look at that. So again, we've got power and sync held. We tap the Xbox button, we hear the power up tone. We hear nothing else. We hear nothing else at all there. That button does not feel too good at all. But what we'll do is We'll call that a failed boot then. So, what we'll do is we will go and we will copy the OSUD tool version of the tool to our storage. So, we're going to go away and we'll do that now and we'll come back and we'll try that one. Right, okay, so we've now got the OSUD version 2 tool copied to our USB stick. So, we're going to have a go with that now. So, again, as before, we're going to insert the USB stick into the USB 3 port on the side of the machine. We are going to press and hold the sync, eject, and we're going to tap power whilst keeping sync and eject held. We're not getting a secondary tone. I'm not sure this sync button's working. I think what we're going to do is we're going to strip this machine and we're going to get the faceplate off so we can get behind it and just see what's going on with this sync button because I'm sure that's not pressing properly. It does not feel to be pressing properly at all. I should press it a little bit further down, see if I can get it to... do anything no it doesn't look to be doing anything at all so that's what we'll do we will go away and we'll actually We'll pull the uh, we'll pull the sync button and uh, and we'll see just what's going on behind it because I'm pretty sure it's not pressing properly. So join me in a sec, guys, when we've got it in play in uh, bits and pieces, and we'll see just what's going on. Right, okay, so let's have another go. So we've got the face plate off, and we're just going to insert the USB stick into the side. It's basically a little dome tactile button on this side here, and it does feel a little bit iffy. Doesn't feel great. So anyway, we're going to press and hold both. I'm going to tap power.
and we get no secondary town again. Just give that a second try. And again, not a lot doing. So, what we'll do is we'll try again. <laughs> this time, we'll go for version 3. Right, okay, so now we've got the OSA version 3 tool on our USB stick, and the USB stick is inserted into the side of the console. So, we're going to do this again. So, we're going to hold the sync. I'm going to press and hold the eject and tap power. And I'm going to listen for a secondary power tone. appears to be anything there. Okay, so we had a secondary power downtown there, if you heard that. OSUD version 3, and that's all three versions of the software. So we do have one more avenue left to explore, and that avenue is the factory reset tool, which essentially leaves the current version of the OS on there. It just flattens everything back to factory default. But it's about the only option we have available to us at the moment, so we're going to give that a try. So bear with me in a moment, and we'll get that prepared onto the USB stick, and uh, try again. Right, okay, so we've got the factory reset tool now on our USB stick. So we're going to try this again. We're going to press and hold. It's very iffy. Sync button. Press and hold the eject. Of course, it would help if we had the machine plugged in, wouldn't it? So, bind, eject, and power. I'm going to keep bind and eject held. And not a lot again there. We're not getting anywhere very fast here, are we? So what I think we'll do, seeing as we're not getting anywhere, is we'll start looking a little bit deeper into this. And not one of those three recovery files is working, which is incredibly suspicious. Uh, 
and the machine seems to boot when it wants to a green screen which makes me think that it's possibly a hard drive issue and perhaps the console isn't getting as far as fully initializing means that it isn't even getting to the point where it's picking our USB stick up or attempting to pick our USB stick up and it's basically just hanging and it's in limbo. So what we'll do is we'll get the hard drive out of here uh, and plug it into the PC. I'm going to do a hard disk uh, bad sector check on here using a third party application. Uh, the tool I'm going to use it to check is HDD Regenerator, there's stuff like Spinrite and things like that. They don't care about the format of the disk or the partitions, they literally just check each sector in turn see if any are bad uh, and what we'll do is once we've given it a scan we'll pop it back in and we'll see if we can actually get some life out of this machine okay so we scanned the disc and as you can see we have eight sectors recovered on that on the hard disk so what we'll do is we'll get this installed back in the xbox and uh, we'll see if we get any change in its behavior right okay so we scanned the hard disk drive there, as you could see, we did find eight bad sectors on the disk and those bad sectors were successfully recovered. So we've reassembled our Xbox, of course, after reinstalling the hard drive. And what we are going to do now is we're just going to test it and see if we get any change. So what we, what we want to see here is before, um, I don't know if you'd noticed on the video, but when we did get the green screen, it did take a little while to come up. Now, what we should hopefully see now is that that green screen comes up, but it comes up quicker than it did before. And hopefully, all being well, of course, we will actually manage to get into the dashboard now. And from there, we can sort of re-upgrade the firmware if that needs be. At a very, very sort of worst case scenario, hopefully we can at least get it now to, uh, to the point where it will attempt to boot from USB. So let's, without further ado um, give it a try so we've plugged everything back in our monitor is of course switched on there so we're just going to power the machine on aha well that's interesting <laughs> That's further than we got before. Interesting. So we'll just see what it's going to do here. Okay, so we appear to be in the dashboard. So, connected to the controller, and it looks like it's going to go through the initial setup procedure. So, let's do that then. So, we'll hook it up to my Wi Fi network. And I'll just pop this in off camera, so bear with me a sec. Okay, so password is now in, so we're just going to connect to the network, hopefully, all being well. So this machine was marked as not being able to connect to Wi-Fi, obviously, because they couldn't get it into the dashboard, so it is connected, so that's good. So that's one thing we can cross off our list. So it does indeed connect to Wi-Fi. So we are in the United Kingdom. And is it going to find any dashboard updates, do you think? See if you can see the screen any better with the light off. Uh, yeah, maybe a little bit. 
Okay, so it's going to reboot the machine now. I don't know if that means it's found an update or what. Hopefully it's going to reboot properly this time. We still have sync because the red light is on the bottom of the power on the monitor. Okay, it's just going down now. So it looks like it's doing something, that's always good. So we get the green screen now, we get it nice and quick, so that's cool. So this sometimes is where the machine would get to previously and it would just sit here forever and a day. Other times it would just sit on a completely blank screen and do nothing at all. So hopefully this time we're going to get past here. Okay, so we look to have booted again. So I'm just going to reconnect the controller once more. Okay, so we don't require any updates, so that's good. So we're going to select a time zone. Can we run through the power? This is always annoying, this little screen, because it takes it five minutes to scroll through. <laughs> bit like the first time on the PlayStation when you actually go to input some text and it goes, oh, do you know you can use the touchpad for this? And it gives you a little five minute animation and you just wish it would bugger off. There we go. So, uh, yeah, we'll just use energy saving for now. Sign in with a Microsoft account. I do have a test demo one that I use for these Xbox Ones. So I will sign that one in. If it loads up. There we go. So I'm just going to put this one in. Okay, so that's now gone in. Hopefully I've spelt it right. Indeed. So this is only a test. We, of course, we'll flatten it once we've done. Not too bothered about any of that. God, there's a lot of crap to go through, isn't there, to get it into a dashboard so we can test the damn thing. No. <laughs> Honestly, can we just get to the dashboard, do you think? Oh yes, we've also got this uh, rather funky little intro video to sit through. So it looks like we've uh, we've gotten somewhere anyway. It's playing that happily enough. So for those of you who are wondering what we did, of course, we had the machine where occasionally we'd get to the green screen, uh, but more often than not, we would just sit at a black screen, of course, indefinitely. So what we did was we attempted to load the various versions of the OSUD tool, which is Microsoft's recovery uh, software platform for the Xbox One. Uh, it wouldn't do that. It literally ignored every single one, including the factory reset uh, version of the software. So what we did was we removed the hard disk drive and we plugged it into a laptop computer. And using a piece of software called Hard Disk Drive Regenerator, we managed to get the hard drive scanned for any bad sectors. Eight of them were found and all eight of those were successfully recovered. And we reassembled the Xbox with the hard drive of course reinstalled and we are now back to this point here so obviously the data which was missing and corrupt was rewritten back to the disk and we've actually now got back to the point where we seemingly can get back to the dashboard and that's all very well and good and there we go so we're booted and we're back into the OS so that's cool so the reason why that may have worked for any of you who have taken a look on an Xbox uh, one hard drive, of course, you have a series of partitions with XVD files on there. Those, I believe, are just encrypted uh, 
uh, kind of similar to sort of Wim images on uh, Windows Media, I think, where the actual contents of the file are wrapped up uh, and it basically uses it as a virtual uh, disk image if you like. Um, and of course, any bad sectors in those, I do believe those files are encrypted as well. So any bad sectors are going to throw anything out like that out. It's not going to be able to access the files. And the machine, rather than being able to boot, is just going to sit there on a black screen. Occasionally, if it did get past the bad, uh, a couple of bad sectors, it would get to the green screen, but then it would fail again. And that's where we got to. So it would appear that we're back into the dashboard, which is all lovely. So what we will do, and we've gone through the intro video, so. The controller is still synced. Let's try and pop in a DVD. It's hopefully going to recognise the fact that we've got a DVD in there. That's going to take us through to the Blu-ray player installation, which we'll drop on. As I say, I fully intend just to flatten this back to factory default, so we'll reinitialize the system. When we've done this, of course, this is just a test that we've got a working machine. So, uh, what else did we have on the top of that ticket? So, HDMI works, yes, cables, doesn't really matter. So, disk read game is no, disk read DVD is no. But it appeared to recognise that one. Okay, so let's just launch the DVD. And just see if it plays. Indeed it does. So, disk read DVD, we can mark as yes. And disk read game is marked as no. So let's try... Let's try game disk in there. Let's recognise Thief. The installation has started. Zero percent installing. It seems to be reading it happy enough. There's no horrible noises going on. Too bothered about the update. One percent installing. So yeah, it's reading that quite nicely. So we can say yes, it's reading Blu-ray. Okay. And looking at that, the factory reset, yeah, indeed. Power's on, yeah. So, yeah, that's good. So, all the faults that this machine was marked down with, seemingly, have been repaired okay. So, that's all well and good. So, we're reading game risks, we're reading DVD, we're back into the dashboard. So, I think it's now 3% installed. Four percent. So what we'll do is we'll jump back once this is installed sufficiently to start up, and uh, we'll just check, of course, that the, the game does indeed launch and it behaves itself as we would maybe expect. And then we'll give it a, a reboot and we'll just check it all reboots okay and goes back into the dashboard. And if it does, then we'll call this one fixed and we'll move on to the next one. So uh, come back with me in a little while, boys and girls, when this is installed, and we'll see if we get. Hopefully, uh, thief in this instance. So uh, yeah, join me in a sec. Right, okay. So we've left this for five minutes or so just to continue its installation. It's now twenty-six percent, and it's now showing thief as being ready to start. I have turned the volume up on my monitor as well. <laughs> I wonder why we weren't getting any noise out of it, but um, turns out silly bugger here had beamed at it. A thief needs an update. Yeah. 
Is it not going to install? Is it not going to play without the uh, the update? Do you think? It's not, is it? <laughs> I know. Let's knock the network off and see if it will connect. Or start even. Connect. Come on a bit. There we go. We'll just turn that down a touch. And there we go. So we're gaming again. You know, I've never actually played this. <laughs> I bought it back when I bought the Xbox and uh, never played it. <laughs> it seems to be a theme with me. It does that one. I buy games, take them out of the wrapper, put them in the machine, install them. Maybe play the first five minutes if it's lucky and then that's it. It's a shame, actually. It does look quite a good game. I do need to <laughs> allocate some time aside, I think, and have a good go. I'll just see this properly loads up. Indeed it does. So it looks like um, this is indeed playing quite nicely. This is about as far as I've got with this game, the first level. Um, <laughs> the tutorial level. So yeah, it looks as though this is playing quite nicely. So we're happy with that. So we'll return home. I'll take the disc back out. Let's 
So what we'll do now is we will completely power the machine off. Still blinking away down there at the bottom, if you can see that. Okay, so we're completely off now. The monitor is showing no signal, so we'll try and start her back up. Green screen's up nice and quick. That's good. They do take a short while to start up these things, they're not the quickest in the world. I hear the hard drive reading away there, that's cool. And there we go so we're back in so that's all looking good so i'm happy with that um, the faults is marked on the front of this machine when it was sent up uh, all now seem to be working really nicely so we will turn this one off well actually no we won't what we'll do is <laughs> sync controller back to it Down to settings. System. Stuff actually defaults. Erase everything. And here, go on and connect. Go online. Lovely jubbly. Now we'll go to Store Factory Default. We'll try that again. And once more, we'll just make sure it comes back up to the uh, the relevant bit that we're expecting. Which, of course, is the initial setup screen. If we get that, and I'm happy to call this fixed. And, uh, and we'll see you on the next vid if that is indeed the case. So it does just take a, a little while to think about what it's doing here. I've got an inch between my shoulder blades. At that annoying point where you can't just quite reach it. Okay, so it's thinking about doing something there. Here we go. So it looks like we're just getting ready to come up to the uh, initial configuration screen. This, of course, is where we found it. So it looks like somebody tried to initialize it just before it went kaput. So yeah, for all intents and purposes, this now looks to be behaving itself quite nicely, so I'm quite happy with this. There we go. So we're up to the uh, the initial configuration screen where it's prompting me to connect the controller. I'm happy that that's fixed. So we're just going to power this down now. And we'll call that one done. So thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you've learned something there today. And uh, hopefully this has been of some use to you. Um, it's an interesting one. Uh, as I say, I've only just really started working on Xbox One. I haven't done an awful lot with them. 
but uh, like I say, hopefully you can learn along with me. Uh, this has been an interesting one, and it's certainly one for me to uh, to remember for future reference. So if you do find that occasionally you get a green screen, but more, you know occasionally you can just get a black screen and nothing else, and you can't uh, get it to boot from the uh, the OSUD tools on USB, then do take out the hard drive and just check the bad sectors and see if you can actually recover them. And hopefully you too will be able to get your Xbox One back into the land of the living. So thanks for watching. Uh, and like I say, please comment, rate and subscribe. Uh, if you do have any trouble at all, then you know where to find me on the messages. And uh, as I say, I will see you on the next vid. So, ta-ta for now.